Thank you for joining. This demonstration will show you how to set up an event-based schedule which will monitor for the existence of a specified database record. If the database record exists, then the event-based schedule will set up so that the email is sent to a specific person. So first, we will select event-based schedule. It will then initiate a wizard for you to create the schedule. Select the folder that you wish to store the schedule and then give the schedule a name. You will then give the schedule a description. Then give it keywords. This will make it searchable using smart folders. Click Next. Now we have to establish the condition by which we'll execute the task. You have the option to fulfill any or all of the conditions that you create. If you select all conditions, then all the conditions that you create would need to be met in order for the task or the report to be executed. If you select any, any one of the criteria that you've established can make the schedule execute. We'll select all. If you click add, you will add the particular condition that you want. In this particular case, we want to do uh, if a database record exists. You will name the condition, and then you'll decide whether it's true or false. If the record is false, meaning that if that particular record does not show up in the database, then the, ex the schedule will execute. If it's true, that means the record has appeared and as a result the schedule will execute. You'll select the particular DSN that you wish to monitor and click connect. Next, you will build a record selection query that will determine what type of records that will monitor. Clicking on build, it'll build a, bring up a simple query builder that you can use to select the records that you want. If you're good at SQL, you can select the Advanced tab and write your own SQL query. Otherwise, you can use the Simple Query tool to parse out any particular records that you don't want included in the actual query selection. Click Connect to interrogate the database, and you'll select the particular table that we're going to be monitoring. You'll parse out any particular criteria that you do not want. And if you're happy with your selection criteria, you click Parse. And then click Yes. It will then display a, your, the results of the particular schedule of the particular query that you created. If you're happy with the results, click OK. And then click OK. Click Next. Now we have to select the unique identifier for your table. In this case it would be Dr. ID. With this option you have the choice to monitor for new records so that any records that, are, that appear in your database after today the schedule will run. Or any matching records, any records that are currently in your database at runtime it will run for. Click Next. We've now created the condition, so we click OK. Now that we have our condition, we can add additional conditions that will decide whether or not the schedule will execute if we need to. In this case, we're just going to stick with the one. So click Next. With an event-based schedule, you have three choices based on your conditions of what you can do. You can execute a new report. You can execute an existing schedule that is already saved, or you can select none and do a custom task. We'll do none and do a custom task. You can have the software be able to retry a schedule in case it errors automatically and do so for a certain number of intervals. If you want the schedule to monitor your database during a certain hours of operation, checking the use custom hours of operation box you can create a particular time period in which you want that schedule to actually be monitoring your database. Click 
Click Next. Now for the custom task. You now would select the particular task that you want to run based on your condition. You can run any number of tasks from running a program or document to updating a database record. Please see the automation tutorial to get the scoop on all of those. In this particular case we want to send an email so you will select the email and then you will drag it to the right and drop it. Then bring up a simple email writer in which you can write your email message. Like Just like Outlook, you'll type in who it's going to. Add a CC, BCC, or attach an additional file. A subject to the email. And then you can write a message. <clears throat> Using an event-based schedule, you can actually customize the email by inserting values from the database that you're monitoring. Using the inserts function, it's quite simple to simply drag a particular field from your table into the subject line or the email field or even the body of your email. For example, if we wanted to customize the subject line and name it for a particular doctor that this verification is for, we'll simply drag in the particular doctor name that this, that this verification is for. Next, you'll write the body of the email. And again, you can use the inserts function to do all of the typing and also inserting certain fields from the database that you're monitoring. Now that the task is there, you can create additional tasks as, ne as necessary. Once you're happy with all the tasks that you've created, click Next. Using the execution flow, if you had a schedule executed at the same time as a custom task, you can decide whether it will go first or last or alternate. Once you're happy with the schedule in general, click Finish. If I go to my Demo Schedules folder, my monitor database schedule I just created is there. If necessary, I can execute it on demand by right clicking and clicking on execute. I can disable the schedule and it will no longer monitor. And if I click the properties button, I can go back in and edit the settings as necessary. So now we've just set up an event based schedule that is monitoring for the existence of a particular database record and in doing so sends an email notification to whomever necessary. Thank you for joining.